Today we have a bit of a special intro because this little dude right here decided it was a good idea to play on my keyboard as I was editing and somehow he managed to close Adobe Premiere and completely delete what I was editing. What do you have to say for yourself, Cheese? Well, I hope you're happy. Welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last time we took down our fourth Team Star boss, the fairy loving little guy, Ortega. And today we're gonna be heading back to the academy because there's actually a couple of classes that I wanna take and I wanna go visit our homeroom teacher, Jock, and report my new findings. But in terms of what we're actually doing next on our adventure, if we zoom out, you'll see we took down number 15 Team Star's fairy crew, which means according to the map of the levels of everything, the next gym leader we should take on is apparently all the way in the bottom left corner. But I've decided I actually wanna do things a little bit different. And so today we're actually gonna be heading after Grusha, AKA the Sub-Zero Shredder. This ice type user, once a renowned snowboarder, was forced to retire from the sport due to a grievous injury. His formerly fiery passion now remains locked away beneath a thick, icy shell. So we're gonna be helping Grusha come out of that shell. Since we've already explored most of Mount Glaciato, I figured it makes more sense to take him on next, even though he is a little bit higher level. I mean, I was talking about last episode how I wanted a bit more of a challenge, so... That's what we're gonna be doing today, and if you guys are excited, as always, don't forget to hit that like button. And specifically Jock, the homeroom biology teacher, wanted to check up our Pokedex when I've reached 200 entries. Well, you will now see that I have caught 202 Pokemon. I've been hard at work catching away. You can see some of my most recently caught Pokemon there. And actually, if we go to this page, you guys have been reminding me that we can also get rewards from the Pokedex itself, so... For 190 species registered, we'll get luxury balls, and for 200, we will get 5 EXP candies. But now it is time to head back to class, and I wonder if maybe... Uh, nothing at the nurse's office yet. Oh well. Let's go to the biology lab and get our reward from Jacques. Last time he only gave us ultra balls, which was kind of underwhelming, so I hope for 200 Pokedex entries registered, he gives us something a little bit spicier. Come on, Mr. Jack, don't skimp out on me this time. So much data. Oh, wait, what? You're not going to talk about the data this time? What the heck? He's always a sucker for that data, but okay. Talk about some mountains or something. Take this, my way of saying thanks. And we get 20 quick balls. Okay. At least that's better than ultra balls. I mean, quick balls are honestly the best kind of pokeballs. And now he wants 400? Jeez, man. Yeah, that's no easy feat. And speaking of feet, do you ever get cold in those slippers, man? Like I saw a couple episodes ago, he was up on Monte de Vera, still having those toes out. Man's does not get cold. Now, some of you guys have been telling me for a while now that we can find the Titan Pokemon out in the wilderness and actually catch them. However, I don't think they're going to be quite as big as the actual Titan Pokemon, but there is some kind of reference to them when you catch them. So let's check out our map and we'll go in the order in which we face them, which means that first would be, wait a minute, I'm on the wrong side. Cloth, the Stony Cliff Titan, which I think was pretty close to the South Province here. So let us fly to the Watchtower. Now, every time that I've tried to go back to where we caught one of the Titan Pokemon, we can't actually go in the cave with the Herba Mystica, which is a little bit weird because we've seen, like during the cutscenes, there's always an item or like something there. And also, now that we have the climb function, we can get quite a few items that we weren't able to before. Like this power gem TM up here. And also up here. Oh wait, no, I think this is actually where we fought Claw. Well, down here technically. So let's jump down and yep, there is the cave where we indeed found the Claw. But as I suspected, we still can't go inside. So where the heck is this Titan Claw anyway? Ah, could it be you actually? Seems like it, cause this cloth doesn't seem interested in fighting. But I'm still gonna guess that it's probably very low level, so let me grab another Pokemon that's maybe a little weaker. Claw! 
I made sure to save the game too, just in case. Oh god, what just happened there? Did my character just disappear? Okay, no, we're fine. We're over here, and we've got Seijin, the shiny Pachirisu, who's still 20 levels above this little clop at level 16. So I really hope that with a nuzzle... Okay, that actually does very, very little damage. <laughs> Thank goodness for Pachirisu, man. Like, the fact that it's got nuzzle too is such a blessing for catching Pokemon. Though I suppose we could have just gone for a quick ball. Yeah, that probably would have been easier, huh? Well, too late now. We got it paralyzed. We got a little bit of health down. And it just so happens to be nighttime. So I'm hoping that with a dust ball, we can actually get it. Come on, man. Really? You had me cool. All right. Let's see if a spark will somehow not kill it. Wow. That was very, very lucky. But of course, now we triggered its anger shell. So, uh... We might be here for a minute, but not if editing has anything to say about it, as we get a critical capture this time! Let's go! We got Cloth the Titan! Watch it just be a regular Cloth after all. Okay, its Pokedex entry doesn't seem any different, but I believe if we check the summary, we can see... Absolutely nothing different yet. There's gotta be something special to that Cloth. Otherwise, this kind of feels like a scam. I mean, he's not even that big compared to the other cloth either. Like, what the frick? What, what's so special about this cloth? <laughs> other than he's paralyzed right now. Oh my god, those eyes. Okay, hold up. Let's uh, check the summary again because I think that maybe the ribbon, you might have to actually... Ah, there we go. We have to assign it. Indeed, it does have the Titan mark. A mark for a Pokemon that was a Titan. Title confirmed is Cloth, the former Titan. So if we actually assign that to him, and then I believe send him into battle, it'll actually say Cloth, the former Titan, when we fight something. So let's go test it out against this, uh... Okay, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> Guess we'll just walk up to you the good old-fashioned way. And there it is. We're fighting Nakali. Uh, nothing so far. Maybe it's when we attack. Cloth use Rock Smash. Okay... So what the heck does the ribbon even do? I thought maybe every time he attacks, it'll say like, Cloth the former Titan, use Rock Smash. But nope, it's just a regular old Cloth with the mark, I guess. I don't really see the big deal about it, but I guess now we have a Titan? Well, I suppose not every Titan Pokemon is created equal. And so next up, we're heading over to the Asado Desert where we can actually catch a Titan that you can't catch anywhere else in the game. And that is, of course, the Titan Dawn Fan of the past, AKA, I already forgot its name. <laughs> I know that the future one is called Iron Treads, but this one was, I believe, a Great Tusk, and there it is. Okay, he's actually a lot bigger than the other Titans we fought. Like, look at him compared to a regular old Dawn Fan. Oh my God, yo, leave me alone, dude. Oh my, yo, he's still chasing me. What the frick, man? This ain't ring around the Donphy. Okay, well, just like with uh, the last Titan, I'm gonna save the game just in case we somehow fail to catch it. And you might notice I actually brought Toadsworth because this is a ground and fighting type and I don't want to accidentally kill it either with someone like RuPaul, even though it's actually at level 45. So probably we're not gonna be killing it anytime soon. Oh, there's the knockoff as we go for a spore. We're just gonna make it nice and asleep. Now, because of this Toad Scrolls ability, I believe it always goes last with uh, non attacking moves like spore, but it never fails to hit them, regardless of the target's ability. That doesn't mean it has 100% accuracy, even though I think spore maybe does have a pretty high accuracy compared to other sleeping attacks, but. I mean, regardless, we were actually slower than Great Tusk, so our Spore would have hit second, no matter what. Anyway, I'm gonna go for a couple of Mega Drains as we bring it down to yellow HP. I don't know if we can go for one more. I feel like it would kind of be risky, so maybe we just start chucking Pokeballs already? You know what? I don't want to risk a Mega Drain, but we can definitely go for a Mud Shot, and that's gonna drop its speed too, as well as its HP down to the red zone, which means that this time the Dust Ball should hopefully work out, and it does! We've got the Great Tusk! Finally, our first Paradox Pokemon! Shout out to everybody in the comments that let me know if you can actually catch these in the desert, because I probably wouldn't have realized it otherwise. 
Sightings of this Pokemon have occurred in recent years. The name Great Tusk was taken from a creature listed in a certain book. And we know exactly what that book is now, but as you can see, its name is literally Great Tusk in the Pokedex. It is not related at all, apparently, to Donphan. Well, at least not in name, obviously in terms of the look. Yeah, this is like pretty clearly a past form of Donphan with a brand new ability called Protosynthesis, which all of the past form Paradox Pokemon, or the ones found in Pokemon Scarlet share, that boost the Pokemon's most proficient stat in harsh sunlight, or if it's holding a Booster Energy, which is a new item that we haven't quite seen yet, but he's got a pretty good nature, actually. Raises attack, lowers its worst stat, I guess, in special defense. I mean, ideally you'd want it to lower the special attack, but that's not bad, 149 attack stat. Pretty crazy. So Great Tusk will be added into the decks and it's 376, what the heck? I would have definitely guessed it goes to the end of the decks, not like somewhere in the middle as this Don fan really, really wants to fight. Like, I don't know what the heck you're on bro, but I'm not feeling it. And actually I noticed another, a glowing Terra Pokemon. Yo, it's Cyclizer, what the frick? You're way too fast, so let me hop on Cory and Okay, he decided to stop for us anyway, so let's get it! We got a special Terra type side blizzard, and it's actually going to be a flying type? Okay. Well, that definitely works out because I've actually got Notch back on the squad, even though technically this is a new Notch here, a male one that I think might have the new ability for Knackle Stack. And also, it's one of those with the special Terra type, I believe, Ghost type. Which is pretty good, because normally, Knackle Stack is weak to fighting moves, but if you Terrasalize the Ghost type, of course, they're not going to be able to hit you. So, one more Rock Slide will knock it down low enough that it will shatter its Terrastalize. And now, we get to catch it. You know, the Dust Balls haven't failed me so far. Well, I say that, and yet, they did fail twice. But not this time, because we got a Critical Capture. And level 40 on Knackle Stack, which I believe means, surprise, Notch is evolving! <laughs> Finally, we get to see the final form of this Minecraft Pokemon as it becomes a literal Iron Golem slash Desert Temple from Minecraft. Like, what the heck is this Pokemon, man? Clearly someone at Game Freak has been having way too much fun playing the game, because like, this has to be inspired by Minecraft, right? Garganacle will rub its fingertips together and sprinkle injured Pokemon with salt, even if severe wounds will promptly heal afterwards. That's right, and upon evolving, Notch will be learning Hammer Arm. I was definitely expecting something more rock type, but I guess that makes sense. Uh, we'll get rid of the Body Slam since I like having Salt Cure in there for a little bit of extra seasoning. I love that it evolved in the desert though, because it's literally a desert temple. Look at this absolute unit. This is like the new Barbrickle right here. Like such a silly looking Pokemon that I'm honestly thinking about now having on the final squad too. Like, I don't know, man. I'm like so conflicted what Pokemon I want to have going up against the Elite Four. And I always like having at least one kind of odd one out, like Pokemon that people wouldn't normally use that just looks super silly or goofy and Garganacle definitely fits in that category. Like, what the frick is this? Oh my god, are you trying to crush my head? Bro, relax, Notch. I know we haven't known each other that long, but damn. You crazy. The only problem with my Garganacle is it has a horrible nature that raises special attack, lowers its best stat. And actually, it's got Sturdy, not the new ability. But honestly, I kind of think Sturdy might be better. Like, the new ability, obviously, is more unique, but... I did actually pick up a Brave Mint we could give it, which I'm guessing Garganacle has a pretty speed anyway, so let's go for it. Give it the Brave Mint, and now if we check out its stats, it previously had 89 attack. Now it's got 108. Okay, a lot better there. Maybe still not amazing, but you know, that's because he's not EV trained yet. He actually has really good IVs in terms of attack, HP, and defense. Speed though, pretty horrible, but I mean... It's got really bad speed anyway. Oh my god, did you just fall asleep? <laughs> Yo, it just sleeps standing up. Like, it literally just turned off its eyes. Oh, okay. Now let's check out the Great Tusk, which is definitely more Titan-sized compared to at least that cloth. This is an absolute unit. Wait, what the heck? You're asleep? 
Oh, wait, that's because we had it or caught it while it had spore on. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Is he trying to eat me? Does my own great tusk not like me? Bro, relax. It's okay, man. It's just a game. Why you have to be so mad? <laughs> now, while we're on the hunt for these Titan Pokemon, we might as well go after the next one, which I believe was Bombardier. So up the stony cliffs we go. Whatever the heck this area was called, Stony Cliffs was where we caught cloth, so we should see somewhere around here. I don't know what the heck this place is called, but I'm glad there's no more boulders rolling down trying to kill us as we've made it to the top. But I'm not exactly seeing any bombardiers around anywhere. A little bit confused. I don't quite know where this bombardier could be, which is a little bit worrying. But we do find a TM for Shadow Claw and a special Terra type Low Kicks that I actually checked out earlier. And it's apparently Fighting type, if that's your cup of tea. Bro, there's so much exploring in this game. Like, it's so hard to get every single thing. Oh, what the frick? There was a Timid Mint here this whole time? That's actually one of the best mints to get. So just in case you want one, I'm right by where the windmill area is. Kind of down from where you find Bombardier. But speaking of Bombardier, I don't know where the frick it is, so I suppose we'll move on to the next Titan. Ah! Oh, the sun! It blinds me! <laughs> Whoa. Never realized you can literally hear the windmill. This is pretty cool, actually. Oh, I just noticed there's actually a TM we never picked up down this way, so let's hop to it and fly over to this thing. It's literally fly! That makes a lot of sense. Like, you have to fly to it, so you get the TM for fly. I actually wonder if uh, RuPaul might be able to learn that, since he is a bird Pokemon, but I highly doubt that he can fly. All right, well, I guess we're not getting ourselves a Titan Bombardier, but I want to see if maybe that was just a fluke. So we're back at Castoroya Lake, where, of course, we took on the False Dragon Titan, and I want some answers, man. Who actually was the false dragon? Was it Dondozo, the catfish, or was it actually Tatsugiri, the actual dragon type Pokemon? Let's find out as we head back to the cave where we fought it. And I'm guessing once again, yeah, we can't actually go in the cave, but there's gotta be a little Titan somewhere around here, unless it's actually back where we first encountered it, like where Dondozo snatched it up from like the little cliff, which I believe was over on this island. Oh, there's a Dondozo, actually. But I don't think it's you, because it's, like, moving around. Though, it does look pretty big compared to other Dondozo. No, yeah, that's definitely not it. He wouldn't have had the little exclamation mark above his head. So, just pretend I didn't see you once again, and we'll swim over to this little island. Ah, yes, I believe it should be you. Yep, he's not moving. So, uh, let me make sure that Quixote is healed up. And, ay 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 Titan! Sorry about that. <laughs> well, let's see if our little dragon is actually ready to handle the Dragon Titan, as one Dragon Claw will already bring it down to less than half, so I don't want to go for another one of those and accidentally kill it, though it is doing a lot of damage with the Muddy Water. I mean, we can always pray that it doesn't go Muddy Water, as it actually goes for Taunt. Very nice. One more Ice Fang is actually going to kill it. And I didn't save the game. So does that mean that we just lost our chance to get the Titan Tatsugiri? Oh god, I didn't save the game beforehand. What do I do? Can I reset? Like, I'm guessing that it's not gone forever, right? I'm confused though, because technically they were both Titans, so does that mean you can't get a Titan Dondozo? 99% sure it's not this guy, considering he went up to us. Like, the Titan or previous Titan seem like they're more like a static encounter, so yeah, uh... I'll, I'll come back to this later and hope that maybe it respawns. That would suck if it doesn't. Well, I think it's about time we head up to Glaciado Mountain to take on Grusha. But before we do, I noticed there's actually an outbreak of Citadels around here. And I want to try out this shiny hunting method that I've been seeing. Aha, we found an outbreak of Citadels. So down we go. And there's our first one already. So... The basic gist of this shiny hunting method is you want to take down, I believe, about 60 of the Pokemon in the outbreak. And now that we've got Notch fully evolved, we can easily do that with auto-battling. 
So we're gonna count up to 60 of them. I don't even see any more Toddles around here though. Like what the heck, were there literally only two in this outbreak? There's no way, there's gotta be more. Okay, there we go. We've arrived at our destination. Ah, okay, so this is where you guys were all hiding, okay. Well, don't mind if I just destroy all of you. And this will actually be some nice training for the gym too, since of course, it is an ice type gym. I feel like, oh my god, did my character's neck just break? What the frick? Bro, oh my god, there's so many more Citadels now. And I totally forgot to keep count. But yeah, you want to count up to about 60. I believe anything over 60 is like the shiny rates don't increase anymore. Kind of similar to Pokemon Let's Go, where shiny hunting was based off of like your catch combo, like catching the same Pokemon over and over up to 32, I think. In this game, uh, at least with mass outbreaks, you want to go all the way up to 60 of the Pokemon in the outbreak. And then at that point, you'll have the highest chances of finding a shiny. Of course, you can also use sandwiches to increase your shiny odds even further. Plus, having the shiny charm, which you get from completing the Pokedex, will make it even more likely that you can get a shiny. Unfortunately, I lost count a long time ago, so I'm just gonna pretend that we're like somewhere around 20 to 25 now, and just keep going from there. So that's uh. Now, once you've got 60 of the outbreak Pokemon knocked out, basically, you're gonna wanna check and make sure that none of the ones around are shiny. And once you're sure that there's absolutely no shiny, which like, yeah, there's a couple of Citadels that spawn up here as well. There might even be more up this way. So let's just make sure that we have no shiny at all. And it doesn't look like it. So what we're now going to do is what people are calling the picnic method. So we basically set up a picnic and you'll notice that all of the Pokemon around you disappear Wait for your Pokemon to all come out of their balls, then you're gonna pack it up, destroy that picnic, and that will basically reset all of the spawns in the area, but still maintain that 60 combo of Pokemon that you knocked out. So basically, you still have your higher than average shiny odds, but a whole set of new Citadels that can potentially be shiny. So just make sure to check out every single potential spot that they can spawn in the outbreak and once you're sure that there is definitely not a shiny you basically just rinse and repeat so we're gonna set up our picnic oh wait i can't do it while riding whoopsie let's try that again boom set up the picnic only annoying part is you have to wait a little bit while your trainer actually you know sends out all the pokemon but just spam the y button all of the spawns should reset uh you might have to walk around a little bit to make the satatles actually appear again like you can see once i go down to this area a lot more Citadels start popping up eventually. So that's basically it. That's the uh, Outbreak Shiny Hunting method. Might still take a while to get a Shiny, of course, because, you know, that's how Shiny Hunting works. So I'm gonna keep repeating this method a couple more times and we'll see if I get lucky. 2,000 years later. Well, it's been about an hour and I've had absolutely no luck with this Citadel. But one thing I found out is if you wanna get a lot to spawn, you just have to face a wall and when you turn around they'll all be there waiting so because i'm sick and tired of this i decided i'm just gonna take out the rest of this citadel population i mean knocking them out does make more citadel spawn so you never know maybe this is the way we actually get one to shine uh. well that shiny hunt definitely sucked but before we head up to the top of glaciado mountain to fight grusha i think it's about time we nickname our armor rouge who's kind of been on the team, kind of not this whole time, but since we're fighting the Ice Gym, I figure we should make it official. So we're gonna head into the summary and change the nickname. And since this is a female Armor Rouge, I came up with what I think is the perfect nickname, and that is Samus from the Metroid series. Since of course Armor Rouge is all about them arm cannons, even though we haven't actually learned its main attack, the actual one that uses the arm cannons, but now let's check out the map. I don't think we're actually too far away from the gym, so we're gonna set that as our destination. And yeah, you'll see that it's literally right up there, so we might as well make the journey on foot, or rather on Koraidon, which shouldn't be too bad, unless, of course, I start slipping down all these rocks like usual. I also wanna fight any trainers we happen to find along the way, which actually there's a boss trainer over here, or 
special, stronger trainer, whatever the heck they're called, the ones with the black text box apparently have more Pokemon and also sometimes their Pokemon can have held items and higher levels. But it should be more than okay for Dubloon with the Steel Beam! <laughs> So yeah, I've got both Steel types back on the team because we're doing or taking on an Ice Gym. You can see there I got Dabloon, Spinel, RuPaul, who's half fighting type, so also super effective. And it looks like at level 45, Arctobax will be learning Ice Beam, but considering this is more of a physical attacking Pokemon, I don't think that's really that great of an option. You might notice I also gave Dubloon the leftovers as a couple people suggested. Didn't actually read what his next Pokemon is, so I'm hoping... Okay, it's Bruxish? Wait, actually that's fine because that is a Water and Psychic type, which I'm actually kind of surprised is in this game considering we also have Belooza as a totally new Water and Psychic Fish Pokemon. Final Pokemon for this lady is going to be a Grimmsnarl, which is once again going to face the wrath of our Steel Beam! <laughs> It is just too strong, but it does a heck of a lot of recoil damage. And a couple of you guys actually pointed out in the comments that Steel Beam is kind of like high jump kick in that when you miss, it does actually do damage back to you, which I didn't know. It seems a little bit weird, but like, I guess you still try to charge up the beam, which is what actually does damage to the Pokemon is charging the beam itself, not firing it. So yeah, that's why you end up taking damage, even if you miss with the Steel Beam. It'd be cool if in a future game, they actually animated it to where your move literally misses, like the Pokemon still fires it, but I don't know, the enemy Pokemon dodges out of the way or you actually miss, like it just goes right past it. Oh my god, it's another one of these weird fingers and it looks like this one actually has a TM on top of it. Okay, we got Fly, which I actually picked up another TM for Fly literally earlier today by where the Flying Titan was, but... Looks like we've got a Dragon Tamer over here, which might be the perfect opportunity to test out our Quixote in battle. First time that we're actually going to try to put it to the test, even though we're actually Dragon type ourselves. So, wow. Okay, perfect start right there. We miss, and yep, there's the Dragon Tail. Not actually going to do as much damage as I thought. And that also forces us to, to switch out. So, okay. Wait, I don't actually get to pick what Pokemon gets sent out? Okay. Well, here comes Spinel, which is actually the perfect Pokemon to take on another dragon since we are, of course, fairy type. And this time with the play rough, we are actually going to one shot. Oh, thank goodness, dude. I was getting a little bit worried because Spinel doesn't have the highest attack stat, as many of you guys pointed out. The Gigaton Hammer is definitely what carries this Pokemon having 160 power, but I gave it the Expert Belt, which does more damage if you use a super effective hit, so maybe that's what pushed it over the edge to actually one-shot it with the play rough. But it looks like we made it to the Glaciato Gym. There doesn't actually seem to be a city around it, though I guess that'd be a little bit redundant, like we literally have Monte Nevera, the city with the ghost gym, right next door, so I didn't expect there to be a city here, but it's still a little bit weird, like there's just a gym in the middle of nowhere. Though I guess like yeah, its territory is basically the slope itself, which we could explore, though I feel like there probably isn't much to see. Actually, there is a Pokemon Center up here that we should definitely at least get the fly point for before we head into the gym itself, as we actually have another TM for Snowscape, and there's actually another League rep as well. Hello, hello! I defeated 10 trainers! Oh, you're the one for Mount Glaciato! Heck yeah! Get the TM for Blizzard! Don't mind if I do, even though again, not really great for our ice type since it's more of a physical attacker, but I'll grab it nonetheless and also heal up for good measure. Ooh, we almost have all of our Pokemon in different types of balls. If it wasn't for RuPaul, or I guess technically Gimme Ghoul since RuPaul has to be in a Pokeball as our starter Pokemon. If we swap that one out, then our whole team will be in totally different Pokeballs, which is pretty cool and kind of rare to see. But yeah, now that we healed up, we are ready to head inside the Glaciato Gym and take on our seventh leader. Or maybe not, because we've got Nimona. I heard the good news. Congrats on gym badge number six. Not even a tenth of the trainers who take on the gyms get this far, you know? Really? They must suck then. But I'm not surprised you made it. I just knew there was a reason you caught my eye. 
thanks? Oh, please. I should be the one thanking you. Anyway, I bet you could use a little warming up before you take on the gym, huh? Come on, you know the drill by now. Oh, gosh. We got another rival battle coming up. Didn't we literally just do one? Well, no, that was actually back at the fifth gym in Medali. So I guess for our seventh gym battle, we get a little bit of a warm up with Nimona. Okay, right. Always important to check what environment you'll be battling in. Okay. The battlefield can have these teeny effects on your Pokemon's balance and stuff, you know? I guess that makes sense. We're in an ice gym, ice arena. Maybe our Pokemon would slip and slide around. But it doesn't seem like it, considering our trainer just walked across just fine. So I don't really know if this is going to affect Nimona's battle at all. I suppose we'll find out, as her first Pokemon will be Lycanroc. And I've still got Quixote leading the charge, which is not great. Show me the battle skills that got you six badges. Yeah, how about I show you me switching out because Lycanroc is a rock type, of course, and that's super effective against ice. So uh, let's not do this immediately. I'm going to get the heck on out of there and send in Doubloon. You should already know at this point exactly what we're going for, too. Okay, Sand Attack doesn't affect Doubloon. I love that ability, dude. It's so, so good. And actually, I don't think we even need to go Steel Beam. Pretty sure a Flash Cannon should finish it as we tank up the Crunch. And there it is. Ba-bam. You're out of here. That stung. But you're not the only one who can hit hard when it counts. Well, why don't you show me, Nimona? So far, all of our rival battles against her haven't been that crazy. Like, I can't think of one time that Nimona's actually pushed us to the edge. All my friends are dead. As, uh, looks like Garganackle is actually going to be learning Heavy Slam. And I've heard this move is really, really good on it because it's such a heavy Pokemon. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Curse. Could have gotten rid of the Salt move instead. I don't really use it all that often, but... I don't know, it's like a special attack, so I want to keep it. Uh, next up, Nimona, though, is going to go for Palmot, which is Electric and Fighting type. So let's test out Samus now with her new nickname. Going to be feeling twice as powerful. I don't really know why. I just feel like our bond has grown stronger. So maybe the Pokemon has also gotten stronger. I know, obviously, that's not a real mechanic, but Palmot's actually going to be faster and hit us with the Thunder Wave. I really, really hope we don't end up fully paralyzed. That would suck. Come on, Samus. Shake it off like Taylor and hit her with a Psy Shock. Hell yeah. Absolutely blasted. I'm really hoping that Samus can get enough experience to learn its new signature attack. Doesn't look like it's going to be at level 44, though. I'm kind of expecting maybe at 45, but I don't know if we're going to get enough experience just from this Nimona battle to actually reach that. Unless there's gym trainers with uh, Grusha's gym challenge. I mean, you never know. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope because a couple episodes ago, I was talking about how the gym challenges have been a little bit too easy for my liking. At least in the fact that there's barely been gym trainers, except for like at the ghost gym. And I think uh, there was another one, but I can't even remember. That's how little trainers there have been throughout this whole gym challenge. But... Quixote clutches it out, takes down a Dragon type all by himself, even though he took a lot of damage from the Dragon Pulse. So we're definitely going to switch out for Nimona's final Pokemon, which is, of course, going to be her own starter. Trading attacks on the brink of winning or losing gives me chills. Let's see who ends up winning. Spoilers, it's going to be me, because her final mod is going to be Skeledurge, the Fire Crocodile. Here comes the fun part. Time to make this Terra Orb shine. Oh my goodness, I forgot terrestrializing is a thing once again. I don't know why, throughout the main story, I totally forget to terrestrialize. I guess because you don't really need it. Like, it feels a little bit, like, overkill. But I suppose if we don't finish it with Aqua Step, then maybe I'll go for it. Oh, okay, you actually survived it. Well, not expecting much retaliation. This move's gonna hit with the force of all my training! Really? Torch Song? Well, that does remind me, some comments pointed out how the little bird actually becomes a microphone during that attack. Makes a lot more sense now why Skeletor is called the Singer Pokemon, which definitely makes me appreciate that animation a little more, but 
and didn't end up doing any damage. So we'll finish you off with an Air Slash Skeletor Shatters along with Nimona's Dreams of Victory. Yeah, dance on him. I thought for a second RuPaul, I mean, Spinel was going to take over as the most experienced. I knew I was right to believe in you. But thankfully, RuPaul still just barely on top. That's an L for me. Man, you've gotten so good. Did she really just say that? Okay. You and your Pokemon should be all set now. Here, take these as thanks for the battle. Got three max potions. There's just two gems remaining. Then that'll be all that's left will be to try out to be champion. Give it all you've got. Now let's get you back to the gym lobby. Or you could just take me straight to the gym battle, you know. That would be very nice and convenient, but of course not. Did she even heal our Pokemon? Oh, okay, she actually did. That's nice. Welcome to the Glaciado Gym. Let me register you, Orange. yes? You should know this by now, bro. Great! Now in order to face Gym Leader Grusha, you'll first need to pass the gym test. Here at Glaciado, that means doing the Snow Slope Run! Ride a Pokemon down the designated course and try to reach the goal within the time limit. To start your test, just head out of the gym and go up the slope to your left. We'll fill you in on the details there. Now get out there and have fun! Yo, that sounds awesome! We haven't had an actually fun gym challenge since all the way back at the first one, the soccer kind of game. Looks like we're actually going to be doing some snowboarding with Grusha? That sounds sick! He said it's on a certain Pokemon, which I'm guessing is going to be on Goraidon, but it'd be really cool if we get to use one of our own. Hey there, I've been waiting for you. This is where the snow slope run starts. Your task is to ride a Pokemon all the way down. It's like a slippery, slidey nature trail. Reach the finish line with a target time, and you'll have passed the test. So, ready to attempt the gym test? Heck yeah! What explaining does that really need? Then let's get it started! Enjoy the winter wonderland on your way down! Will do! Oh, this is so cool! Totally reminds me of the Pokemon anime, specifically the Orange Island season, where they kind of invented the whole idea of a gym test in the first place. One of them literally had Ash doing basically the same thing. Well, I guess it wasn't snowboarding, more like sledding on the back of Blastoise, I think it was? Might have been another Pokemon, but here we go! Oh my gosh, yo! We're slipping and sliding! Oh, this is so cool! I thought it was going to be just like the normal riding on Kodai Don, but no, you actually a lot more slippery, and we gotta try to make it through these flags, I'm guessing. I mean, I don't know what would happen if we miss any of them, but uh, I ain't missing none, dude. I want to show off my legit snowboarding skills as... Okay, I actually almost missed that one, but... We still got it. Pretty sure they would deduct points for hitting the flags if this was like the Olympics or something, but it's not the Olympics. It's just, uh, wait. Is that really it? No way. Are you serious? We had a whole minute 30? How the heck would anyone take longer than a minute to do that? There is absolutely no way, unless you purposefully stop, that it would take you more than a minute to complete it. What? Kind of want to try that again and see if we can do it faster. Congratulations! Yay! That was some of the best sledding I've ever seen! Almost like seeing Grusha in his prime again! Oh, you obviously passed the test with flying colors. Go let the receptionist know. Okay, but can I do it again? No? Of course not. Man, that's kind of lame. Like, I hope that maybe when we try it again, or, I don't know, after we beat Grusha, maybe we can talk to that dude and he'll give us another try. But I noticed that as we were going down the slope, there was quite a lot of items on the way that we didn't get to pick up. And actually a hidden one over here too. Now I'm curious, there's got to be something up the mountain too, right? Maybe not? Okay, whatever. Let's go back to the gym. There was another item, but I can't be bothered, dude. I'm annoyed. Like, I want to slip and slide again and go fast as we can. Who knows, maybe we can do it again after we beat Grusha. So let's just go up to the receptionist and try it. Great show on the slopes. You know what that means? Yup, it's time. You want to face the Sub-Zero Shredder himself, Gym Leader Grusha? Yes. I'm not even convinced he actually exists. Like, why wasn't the race actually against him? That would have been so much cooler. But I suppose it would have been too hard to animate, right? <laughs> actually racing somebody else. 
We don't got that kind of budget. Oh my goodness. Hello. You're so freaking cute. I wish I got a shiny one of you, but I guess the luck wasn't on my side today. Who the frick is clapping in the back? Oh my goodness. There you are. Brr, I'm freezing. You're not the only one. I take it you're a challenger. My name's Grusha, and I'm a snowboarder. Used to be pro, actually. Now I'm a gym leader. I saw you on the slopes. Your skills, yeah, they were pretty cool. But don't let that go to your head. Winter mountains are dangerous. They can throw your life right off course. Easy as that. Same thing with Pokemon battles, really. It's always the most dangerous when you're just starting to get the hang of things. Today's not a great day to face me, you know. You're better off giving up. You sure you want to battle me? Wait, are you serious? We can say no? What would be the point of that? Like, we'd really have to do this whole cutscene again? No! Still trying to act cool, huh? That's too bad. Well, this is my job now, so don't take what I'm about to do personally. Okay. Choice words from Grusha, but I have a feeling he's not going to live up to them. Get ready to feel the icy bite of reality. Whatever you say, Mr. Cool Guy. Whoa. Showing off a little too much skin there, aren't you, buddy? <laughs> Definitely the coolest gym leader, I would say, as once again, I'm leading off with the wrong Pokemon. Don't say I didn't warn you. Not my fault if you get overwhelmed. Nah, man. Look at my face right now. I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin. Go, Notch! Because, yeah, Quixote, not necessarily the best to be handling Ice-type since he's half-dragon. As uh, Grusha's going to start things off with a Tailwind, which actually makes all of his other Pokemon faster, I believe. Pretty sure he was already going to be faster than Garganacle anyway, but... Uh, yeah, Garganacle don't care about your Blizzard or whatever the heck you go for. Rock Slide is absolutely going to destroy it. It looks like next up we've got Bear Tick. Now, I don't think any of my Pokemon are going to end up being faster than him, so might as well switch on over again. Oh, wait, I forgot. I was doing this little challenge with all the gym leaders that I wasn't going to switch my Pokemon. Whoops. Well, I guess I broke my little uh, challenge. My bad. <laughs> At this point, it's too late. Like, I was thinking, maybe I can switch back to... Oh my god, you've got Earthquake. Okay. Well, well, well. Dubloon's actually able to tank it somehow, which is pretty surprising. But I should have just gone for Steel Beam then, because Flash Cannon is not quite going to finish it. And it's not like we have a priority move or anything, so... Yeah, this is not good. I could have also... No, Terrestrializing wouldn't really help in this situation. Well, not anymore, at least. If I did it right off the bat, it would have made Earthquake neutral effective, but too late now. Doubloon's gonna go down. Why the heck didn't I just go for Steel Beam, bro? I'm so dumb. Well, the Tailwind finally wore off, which means that we should be faster now, especially with Samus, who I believe has a speed racing nature, or maybe it's a special attack boosted. Either way, we are faster, so with the Lava Bloom, we'll finish off the Bear Tick. And even though I totally failed my little challenge of not switching, well, I guess we can keep it up now, as we can at least still try to keep up with using the same amount of Pokemon as Grusha, who's next up going to be sending out Titan. I believe this Pokemon actually has Thick Fat as its ability? Though I could be mistaken, Thick Fat makes a Pokemon not take as much damage from Fire-type attacks, but we've got our Fire Pokemon out here anyway, so... Might as well terrestrialize, give ourselves a little bit of extra firepower, if you know what I'm saying, and hit him with the Lava Bloom! Let's go! Burn it up! Yeah, I feel like if it did have... Oh god, you've got Liquidation! Holy moly! Well, well, well. That was a critical hit, actually. No wonder it did so much damage. No way! You've got Ice Shard, too? Are you kidding me, dude? Oh, no! Samus! It's gonna shatter! That is not a great look for Samus. But we're okay, right? Wait, no, you've got Liquidation. Uh, actually, why don't we send Brew Paul in? I was thinking Spinel could be the final Pokemon we use against Grusha, but you know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they fall, so I'm gonna go for a low sweep 
and the big blubber is a titan is gonna fall quite hard indeed. What an awesome cry, by the way. Like, I know it's based on a whale, so that's very fitting, but that's not even his ace Pokemon. I always forget that they've got one that uh, terrestrializes, and it looks like for Grusha, it's actually gonna be Altaria. I was this close to switching to Quixote, but this Altaria is gonna be a little deceiving and terrestrialize to ice type, so good thing we stuck with RuPaul. Battles are like mountains in winter. The situation can change in a heartbeat. Yep, that's right. It's time for a little terrestrializing. Oh, that's so cool. The terrestrial energy blew away his little scarf for a second. Second character that's kind of like hidden his beautiful face behind a mask, or I guess a scarf in this case. The first one being that uh, Team Star Atticus, I think was his name, the poison type guy, who had a whole mask on, mask off. But unfortunately, our low sweep is not gonna finish it. But we do survive the hurricane, so uh, one more low sweep should definitely knock Altaria off its feet. That's always my little catchphrase, but it doesn't really apply when the Pokemon is flying in the air. I suppose the low sweep just knocked its wind out? I don't know, but RuPaul at level 46 is going to be learning Liquidation. Finally, we get the most powerful, at least physical, water move. Don't know if I want to get rid of Aqua Step though. Actually, it only does five more damage or power. And Aqua Step raises our speed too. I mean, I guess it's good to have both of them, but like I could have probably gotten rid of Air Slash since it's a special move anyway, but whatever. We can always reteach him that liquidation later on. That burning passion you have. You strive for the future no matter. <laughs> Bro, I can't help but notice that one person clapping in the background. Like, you can't even see them on screen right now, but that's just such a funny sound effect. Just like how I used to be. Ah, never mind. I should give you your gym badge. Yeah. Let's skip the formalities and... Huh? You want a photograph together to commemorate your win? Oh, what? Are you a little camera shy? Come on, that's so uncool. I don't usually do that sort of thing, but... Okay, fine. Special occasion. Wow. Man thinks he's too cool to take selfies with us. What the heck? You're not even that cute, bro. With seven gym badges, you should be able to catch Pokemon up to level 55. They'll actually listen to you too, which is nice. You mean ice? Oh, and before I forget, you should take this too. What, did you not think I could hear you through the scarf? What the heck? TM2124 Ice Spinner? Never heard of such a thing. I'm guessing that his Titan might have used it, but... The user covers its feet in thin ice and twirls around, slamming into the target. This move's spinning motion also destroys terrain. Whoa! It's an ice version of Rapid Spin? Okay. Feel free to stop by again, if you don't mind the cold, that is. Not one bit. In fact, I actually missed the cold. It is freaking sweaty in my room right now. Like, man. I wish Puerto Rico got a little bit colder, but, uh... I suppose that's the downside of living in the tropics. Hey, hey, Rika here, at your service. What is this, bring your child to work day? These gyms really aren't giving you much trouble, are they? Not particularly. Rika, Rika! Huh? All right, you two haven't met before, have ya? This young man is orange. He's so good with Pokemon, even La Primera's taken an interest in him. Oh, wow, oh, wow! But I think the Pokemon on Team Poppy are really strong, too. Like, really strong. Which one of you is stronger, do you think? Well, um... I'm one of the Elite Four. Uh, excuse me? Wh how? <laughs> Aren't you just adorable? I know it's hard to believe, but this tiny little one is indeed one of the Elite Four. Yeah, I am. I hope I get to show you my Pokemon soon, mister. Freaking talk about child prodigy. So hurry up and come to the Pokemon League. It's where the, uh, pinnacle... It's where the pinnacle of Pokemon battling happens. See you there! She can barely get out her words. Pretty sure she still wears a diaper. Why the frick did they let a little baby into the Pokemon League? Wait up, Poppy. Don't leave your pal Rika behind. Okay. Well, it is interesting that they actually introduced us to all of the Elite Four before we even actually challenge them. Like, at this point, I'm pretty sure we know all of them, right? 
There's Rika, and I guess now Poppy, obviously, plus our art teacher Hansel, or Hassel, but not Ha. And then the last member would be... Wait, actually, did we meet the last member? I guess not, huh? I'm thinking of La Primera, or Gita, who's actually the champion, so... Maybe we haven't met all of the Elite Four yet. But either way, that is going to be the end of this episode as we have now got seven badges. I cannot believe it, but we're almost there, guys. Just two more challenges left. One gym battle, one Team Star boss, and then we'll be able to take on the Pokemon League. So I hope you guys are excited. Smash that like button if you can't wait, and I will catch you all in the next episode.